So next as an application of quotient topology, we will define the Grassmannians. So let us begin. So let G be a group and such that the set G also so that the underlying set G also has a topology. Right. So we say that G is a topological group if the two maps. So we have since G is a group we have the multiplication map which is x comma y maps to x y this is the product in the group and we also have the inverse map x goes to x inverse right if these two maps are continuous so this question makes sense because uh, g is also there's an underlying there's a topology on g and therefore g cross g has the product topology so we can ask if both these maps are continuous and if both these maps are continuous then we say that then we call g a topological group so let's begin by making a few observations about topological groups uh, first if g is a topological group then left translations. So these are the maps LA from G to G. LA of G is defined to be A times G and right translations. So these are the maps R A from G to G defined as R A of G is equal to G times A. These are continuous. These are uh, continuous. Right? So let's see why this happens. So we can look at G cross G to G. We have the multiplication map. Right? And here we can look at A times G sitting inside G cross G. Uh, so this the this inclusion is given by a comma maps to a comma g right and when we multiply we get a g so this composite so this is homeomorphic to g right so this composite is l so since this inclusion is continuous and multiplication is continuous as g is a topological group so this implies that l a is continuous Similarly, we can take G cross A sitting inside G cross G. And this is homeomorphic to G, right? And to see that the right translation R A is continuous. Right? So uh, the inverse of L A is. So the left translation is a bijection and the set theoretic inverse is exactly L A inverse. Right? So this implies that uh, L A and R A. So similarly for R A are homeomorphisms. Okay. Uh, similarly, the inverse of I Since, since the inverse map is a bijection and i square is equal to identity, so this implies that the inverse map is also homeomorphism. So left translations, right translations and inverse are all homeomorphisms. Uh, the next observation we want to make is 
let u be the collection of open subsets containing the identity element then for a in g the collection a u so here a u is equal to the left translate of this set u is the collection of open sets containing a so clearly since l a is a homeomorphism l a of u is an open subset and it contains a because the identity is in u yeah and conversely if we take an open subset w which contains a so then this will imply that a inverse of w contains e and since this is equal to l a inverse of w right uh, since l a inverse is a, a homeomorphism l a inverse of w is going to be in this in this collection over here so uh, therefore a inverse w we can write as a times inverse of w right so therefore even this w is obtained is in this collection okay so similarly the collection u times a is the collection of by the same reason containing the element a okay so let's make this third observation which is a lemma which is a very useful lemma so let v containing identity be an open subset then there is an open set u which contains the identity such that the set u times u is equal to uh, all those a b with a and b and u so this is equal to u square so we have u square is going to be containing v so given any open set v which contains the identity we can find a smaller open set u such that u square is contained in v so for instance if uh, we take the real line under multiplication i'm sorry under addition and we take the neighborhood zero so if we take any if we take an open subset which contains zero so let's say b zero epsilon right this v then we can take u to be b zero epsilon by two right so the multiplication over here is just the addition so if you take any x comma y in u then clearly x plus y is in v right uh, so let's prove this uh, so consider the multiplication map from g cross u to g this is the multiplication map uh, this is which is continuous right so this implies that the inverse image of v is an open subset and it contains this element right in particular there is a basic open subset uh, which contains this element and it is contained in m inverse v so this implies there exists u1 containing e and u2 containing e such that u1 cross u2 is contained in m inverse v right so we just take uh, u to be u1 intersection u2 right 
So then u cross u is contained in m in inverse v which implies that u times u is contained in it. Okay. Okay, so let's take let's prove make the fourth observation. Mm. Let V be an open set containing an element x in G. Right? So then there exists an open set U which contains the identity such that U is equal to U inverse and so U inverse is the set of u inverse where u belongs to u, yeah, or equivalent equivalently this i of u. So u is equal to u inverse, and u x u is contained in it. So the proof is very similar to the previous lemma. So let's prove this. So proof. Uh, so consider the map g cross g cross g to g right so we can first project to the first two coordinates okay sorry not this is right this a comma b comma c maps to a b comma c which maps to a b c right so this map is continuous this is easily checked, right? So we restrict it to. So we restrict this to the subspace G cross X cross G. Right? So this composite is then a comma x comma b maps to a x b, right? So this implies that. So let's call this composite map F. This is homeomorphic to G cross G, right? So uh, so since F is continuous, so this implies that. Uh, f inverse v is open, right? So again, this implies that there exists uh, f inverse v is open and it contains the element identity x identity, right? So this implies that. There exists open sets u1 containing identity and u2 containing identity such that u1 cross x cross u2. This x is really playing no role over here, right? So um, we could have simply considered the map g cross g to g given by a comma b maps to a x b, right? And once we prove that this map is continuous. Uh, we can do this entire argument. So, um, is contained in f inverse v, right? So, we take u naught to be equal to u1 intersection u2. So, we take u naught first. So, this will imply that u naught cross x cross u naught is contained in f inverse v, which implies that u naught x u naught is contained in it. Right. But u naught may not have the property that u naught inverse may not be equal to u naught. Right. So to rectify this, we take u to be equal to u naught intersected u naught inverse, which is equal to u naught intersected i of u naught. 
since i is a homeomorphism i of u naught is also an open subset so both these contain the identity so the intersection is an open subset which contains identity right and it's easily checked that so then it is easily checked that u is equal to i of u and obviously u x u is going to be contained okay so now that we have these lemmas in place we will prove this interesting uh, okay we need one more lemma mm. let h p contain in g be a closed subgroup so what this means is that h is a closed subspace of g in the topology on g and also h is a subgroup okay so let x be an element which is not in h okay so then there exists u contained in containing identity open such that u is equal to u inverse and u x u intersected h is empty. So let us prove this. Right. So since h is closed and x does not belong to h, right? So this implies there exists an open set V. I mean, we can simply take the complement of H containing X such that V intersected H is empty. Okay. So, uh, for this previous lemma that we proved, this lemma, right, this point 4 implies there exists U open which contains identity such that u x u is contained inside v right so this implies that u x u intersected h is empty okay so using these uh, preliminary results we prove the following proposition Uh, let H contained in G be a closed subgroup. Right. So then G mod H with the quotient topology is hostile. So let us recall that G mod H is equal to G mod equivalence where X is equivalent to Y. Every subgroup defines an equivalence relation X is equivalent to Y if and only if Y inverse X belongs to H. Right. So we have this equivalence relation on G and G is a, topologi G is a topological space. So we can look at G mod equivalence and give it the quotient topology and our claim is that this space is Hostov. So let us prove this. Let us take two points in the in G mod H which are distinct. Right? So B2 cosets. Right. So then this y inverse x it does not belong to H. So, choose a neighborhood E of identity open uh, such that U is equal to U inverse and U Y inverse X times U intersected H is empty. So we can use we can do this using the previous lemma, right? So note that this happens. So note that u y inverse x 
u intersected h is empty if and only if uh, x u h intersected y u h is empty okay so there is an easy set theoretic check so let's do this so suppose uh, let's assume this let's assume this is empty and prove this one, that this uh, intersection is empty if not then there is x u1 h this is equal to y u2 h1 h2 right this implies that uh, u2 inverse y inverse x u1 is equal to h2 h1 inverse right this implies that u since u2 is in u u2 inverse is also in u because u is uh, equal to u inverse intersection h is non empty which is a contradiction right so similarly we can prove the other way let's assume this is empty and let's prove this so if this is non empty then there is u1 y inverse x u2 is equal to h so this implies that x u2 is equal to y u1 inverse h uh, but this implies that uh, x u h intersected y u h is non empty which is a contradiction right so thus we see that this holds okay uh, so now if pi from g to g mod h denotes the natural map then note that pi inverse of pi of x u h is equal to x u h right uh, in fact one easily checks that pi inverse of pi of a is equal to a times h right so this is equal to union of h and h a times h right for every subset a containing g right so this is an easy check which i will leave it to you and using this check so what we will, what we will get is this check implies pi inverse of pi of x u h is equal to x u h multiplied with h right but h times h is equal to h since h is a subgroup so this is just equal to x u h okay so similarly uh, similarly pi inverse of pi y u h is equal to y u times h okay so now as x u h this is equal to union h in h x u h right and these sets are open and right translations by elements of h are homeomorphisms so each of these sets is open and we are taking a union of open sets right so this implies that this set is open right which implies by the definition of quotient topology pi of x u h is an open subset in g mod h which contains
x h this cosine right. Similarly, pi of y u h is an open subset which contains the coset y sub y h right. So, thus we have so we have our x h here we have our y h here we have constructed two open subsets of these two in the quotient topology and we claim that these are disjoint we claim that these are disjoint. If not, right. So let's assume they are not disjoint. So what do we have? We have pi of x u h intersected pi of y u h is non-empty, right? Since pi is surjective, that will mean that when we take pi inverse, pi inverse of pi of x u h intersected pi of y u h is non empty. This implies that pi inverse of pi of x u h intersected pi inverse of pi of y u h is non empty. So, this is non empty as pi is surjective, right. But this is equal to x u h and this is equal to y u h as we saw and this intersection is empty which is a contradiction. Right. So, thus uh, these two open neighborhoods and are disjoint. So, this shows that g mod h is host of uh, so this completes the proof of the proposition.